there are a lot of books on the Reformation. So why another book on the Reformation? Well, actually, uh, my book, The Reformation as Renewal, is not just another history of the Reformation. Uh, it's a fresh history that helps Protestants in particular understand their own identity. In other words, oftentimes the story of the Reformation is told in a way as if the Reformation is a total break or a clean break from the past. But when you read the Reformers themselves, as well as their 16th and 17th century uh, children, what you discover is that they actually thought of themselves in continuity with the past on key doctrines and in key ways. There's a word for this, and it's the word Catholicity uh, in terms of the creed itself, uh, where it says we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. And so the Reformed tradition, for example, in the 16th and 17th centuries argued we actually are defined by a Reformed Catholicity. And even though it was provocative, they said, we are not Roman, but we are Catholic. In fact, we're more Catholic than Rome. And that proved actually quite instrumental as they then separated themselves from the radicals, some of whom said, we, the church has been lost since the apostles. This book on the Reformation, however, is unique because it's a fresh history that actually sits, situates the Reformation according to the reformers and their own identity and how they thought of themselves in continuity both with the church fathers and even some of the medieval scholastics. The Reformation as Renewal, Retrieving the One Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, well, this is a book that is not your typical treatment or history of the Reformation. In fact, it's very much dependent on some of the best Reformation scholars in the last century who have said we need to start not with, say, 1517 or the 16th century itself, but we need to go back. We need to actually understand what's happening in, say, the High Middle Ages and especially the Late Middle Ages. Why is Augustine, for example, so important for centuries later, not just during the Middle Ages, but the Reformation itself. Well, that type of approach is one that sometimes miss in retellings of the Reformation, because if we just jump right into the 16th century, we don't always understand what the Reformers are reacting to and what they are not reacting to. For that reason, this book will be quite appealing because it not only will give you a treatment of, say, Luther and Calvin, or let's say Zwingli and uh, Peter Martyr Vermigli and so many other reformers, but it actually sets them in context so that you understand how they are indebted to, say, not just the scriptures, but the church fathers and even certain medieval, medieval scholastic theologians, but it'll also help you then understand how that background, how that education that they received, how that then informs their present context so that they can actually pass on to those after them a faith that is in continuity with what they believe is the true church from the past. For that reason, this book will be attractive not just to Protestants, but also to evangelicals because evangelicals sometimes have bought into certain misconceptions of the Reformation. And this book, I think, will help evangelicals not just correct some of those misconceptions, but actually understand their own Protestant and evangelical history, their origin, and their identity all the better.